All right, how's it going everybody? My name is Chris, this is John, along with our team, we are VendPoint. So before we kick off, how many people here have ever had a problem with a vending machine before? Okay, a good number of people. Okay, here's what could have happened if VendPoint was around. Okay, so that's what we do. So how do we get here? So we started with Snack Buddy and the awesome poem that John gave. And we he came up with the deal with how could I find my favorite snacks and you know I want to suggest the snacks that I like. But after doing our market research, we found out there was a much bigger problem. So uh, within that problem, both the vending machine owners and the customers are share that, that problem. So what is it? It's the downtime of the broken machines. I'm, I mean, as a customer, I can't get the snack that I want, and the uh, the owner of that machine isn't making the money, nor is the lease of the leaser of that machine. Also, the reporting is undetailed, or yeah, it's undetailed, and it's not convenient. So, say for this weekend when we're trying to make calls, they hire a third-party source, or it just goes to a voicemail or an answer machine, um, or they send, or we send an email. So you can only call during business hours, and a lot of times that third party that's an extra cost they don't need. So this is the uh, user interface for the application. Um, it's a text-in service, so you would there's a number on the machine and a code, and you would text into the service with a brief description of the problem and the code, um, and then it immediately gets put into our system, and then if you want to take an additional survey, you can, and there's a dashboard for the vending machine owners as well. Awesome. So here's our business model. Our key activities, uh, we need to start building a relationship with local vending owners. Uh, we do have uh, 15 of the stickers out live and active right now on different machines throughout the Milwaukee area. And uh, we need to prove that this uh, product is saving money. Um, the customer segment, here's the breakdown of where the most the main machines are in the most popular areas. The value proposition, again, eliminates the need for an answering service, a, a cost that they don't have to have. Um, and it's real-time service request. So as John was saying, as soon as that text goes in, you get a reply and then an ETA of when they're going to address that issue. Uh, the survey of consumers, uh, we 47 or 37 consumers all together. Here's the uh, little research. There's 46, uh, 4.6 million vending machines out there. Four million of which are, not, are coin and cash operated. So that's the bulk of it. And this is a 19.3 billion dollar industry. So here's some of the results for some surveys. Biggest thing, again, repair guy. I can't see what the problem is, and I need the candy that I want. The revenue stream, it's a monthly service, it's gonna be real easy, you're gonna pay per month, and then also we're gonna charge uh, by uh, service tax. Uh, to the vendor, uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna join industry trade organizations, we're going to uh, meet with the companies, and we're gonna start right here in the local area and expand out. Phase one, we're gonna start specifically with just vending machines. Phase two, we're gonna to go to other coin-operated machines, laundromats, parking meters, arcade. And phase three, we're gonna actually uh, dive into a platform for refunds, where you can get your refund instantly, or you can donate that to a local, uh, charity of your choice that we support. So, without further ado, uh, these are expressed interests that we've already been in contact with, and we're at that point. <laughs> scenario, it's um, <coughs> not spending money on the answering service, um, and also the customer satisfaction of not being on hold for 25 minutes, which I was yesterday. So uh, that was not a happy non-customer. I, I was an unhappy fake customer. Um, so 
Yeah, so if they don't have to hire an answering service on the evenings and weekends because there's an automated service, then that saves them money. So it could also make them money and then if it's a more streamlined uh, process, then they can get repairs done faster and that means more uptime. It's also going to make the users happier because if you go back to the machine, you're like, I'm not going to send my money in there because I didn't get what I wanted. And also, if you didn't get the product you wanted, it usually ends up jamming up the machine, which basically means other people can't buy the product they want, which is lost revenue for the company. So, who answers these emails or SMSs or tweets that you send out? Is that rent point? Yeah. And how are you going to make money? What is that cost? What is that going to cost you? Um, I don't know the exact cost. It's used the uh, Twilio API, and so it costs fractions of a cent per message that we send out. Um, so it's pretty low cost to send out a message. Plus, you'd be charging per message, so those costs would be recovered. That's part of the contract. Um, but as far as who gets the messages, I talked to a repairman. Um, everybody, all the vending machine people have a repairman on evenings and weekends also. Um, and one of the companies I called, the the call actually went to the repairman directly, um, and he actually said, I hate getting phone calls. I wish I could have something in print, um, because I also get phone calls in the middle of the night, uh, and sometimes it's because somebody wants me to drive an hour to return them 50 cents, um, and that's, it, it's, that's a huge amount of money when it would probably be cheaper just to PayPal them 50 cents, their email address after a text. So I think what you're saying is we act as an intermediary, so you have an issue, you send the message, we send the message on to the vending company so that they know and they have a detailed message of what needs to be repaired and the issue that is uh, current for that machine. Today is that all outsourced? When you call, call the guy, was he an outsourced, a third party? To the we got both. Um, uh, for most of the companies who called, we got, um, they were all rude, weren't they? Pretty rude. Yeah, I got a couple, uh, we didn't get any nice answering services. We got a lot of rude answering services and were on hold for a long time. Can you guys take, do like an uh, upsell to the vending companies where you use Square Cash to do the reimbursements or Stripe, but they don't know that, so they're like, oh great, there we, you know, pay 50 bucks a month and they were probably three dollars worth of charges that cost us three hundred dollars worth of Time or uh, we're exploring the whole refund thing because it, in some ways it would actually save them money um, and in, improve customer service to just be able to, you know, PayPal or something. Them. Square cash. Yeah. 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 And, and right that's, now, that's down the road. Right now you, uh, I didn't get uh, what I wanted in the vending machine over at UWM. I had to find some guy named Scott in room 255, which who knows where that is, and maybe I might not get my refund because I don't have proof where you can take a picture and you can prove that you didn't get that refund. So that's down the road. Right now, we're just focusing on service. Did they respond to the 15 stickers? Uh, not yet, but uh, UWM and uh, Grand Avenue Mall are unofficial partners right now. <laughs> <laughs>